Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. So, point of no return, Hearns. Churn earns stern heartburn concern as he yearns to be the A-side again. How you guys doing out there? Look, let's get to it. Eddie Hearn, man. You guys not paying attention to what's going on with our favorite promoter? promoter? <laughs> Something's going on with Eddie Hearn, man. I think right in front of us, he's having a breakdown. And I personally think it's sad. Uh, but there are a lot of people who say he deserves the misery as he earned it. Now, I think for Eddie Hearn, his misery started. It showed up in 2019, June of 2019, man, when Joshua lost by a TKO in the seventh round to Andy Ruiz. Before, before that fight, Eddie Hearn was already very bubbly, very jovial, it's the kind of personality that was almost made to be in front of a camera. You know, like he'll say, he's a mouth. Um, he, fast Eddie, likes to talk, very witty, intelligent man, good promoter. Not going to say like Leonard Ellaby, he'll say, yeah, he's a good promoter, but he doesn't know what he's doing. Eddie Hearn's a good promoter, he knows what he's doing. But back in 2019, after Joshua lost, immediately, immediately after he lost, I saw a kink in Eddie Hearn's armor, where he was on that ring. And, you know, in boxing, I'm sure you guys have heard the saying where, uh, what was his name, uh, the coach for Shane Mosley, not Nazim. Nazim Richardson, right? He says, swim without getting wet. For Eddie Hearn, it's important as a promoter to be able to swim without getting wet or to not let them see you sweat. And he was sweating bullets, man. When I say he was sweating bullets, when Joshua lost that fight, Eddie Hearn didn't know what to do. It was, it was more of him being angry at AJ. Like, how could you lose? And... I remember watching that saying, damn, does he even care about AJ? But, you know, he fast forward to now, he cares about AJ. But Eddie Hearn, I think he, you know, if, you, if you're if you an investor, right, or if you're gambling, I don't gamble. But they always tell you to not, not roll the dice or invest or gamble with what you cannot afford to lose. So I think Eddie Hearn had kind of gambled on Anthony Joshua just remaining undefeated, I guess like Mayweather. Because Eddie Hearn, it doesn't matter what you think, right? AJ can fight. And there's no argument about that. Did, did Eddie Hearn kind of buy the titles for AJ? I don't know, but I could, see the, I could see both sides of the argument. But they had the money, and I think they invested it well. So he made sure when it came to those title fights that he was able to secure those opponents so AJ could get in there and do the business, which AJ did. So after that fight with Ruiz, Joshua wants to go right back into the rematch. Eddie Hearn was sweating. That whole, what, like six months or whatever? Four, by five months, right? Gets back in there in the holiday time, Saudi Arabia defeats Andy Ruiz. Eddie Hearn was ecstatic. Tongue hanging out his mouth. He didn't know what to do. Eddie Hearn was so happy. So after that, Eddie Hearn's back doing a whole lot of talking again. A whole lot of, you know, who has the best profile, who fought the most champions. And he, you know, hey, he exaggerates on some things, but other things he's not lying, okay? When you're on paper, Anthony Joshua's been in there with some stiff competition. But then he goes out here, man, and tries to make a fight with, I think he clips Pulev, right? And he tries to make a fight with Fury. That doesn't quite work out. Around 2021 or so, 2020, you know, some talks about leaving Sky Sports, the zone, a, hundred, a, a significant five-year, nine-figure nine deal. Um, Frank Warren's warning Eddie Hearn not to leave Sky Sports. Because Eddie Hearn had been doing work with Sky Sports, I think, since like 2000. 10, 10 or 12 or something like that. But anyway, for a long time, a long relationship. Sky Sports helped build Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, Katie Taylor. Frank Warren kind of advised Eddie Hearn against just leaving Sky Sports and chasing the money and kind of more about focusing on loyalty and 
and, and understanding how big of a machine Sky Sports is when it comes to getting, uh, getting your fights aired, 120 or so fights a year, and um, that whole model. But Eddie Hearn chose to, to roll with the zone, right? So anyway, trying to get AJ and Tyson Fury for this undisputed fight in Saudi Arabia, that falls apart. All of a sudden, Eddie Hearn, she's over there with the zone. He leaves Sky Sports. There's some bad blood. Of course, that's why Frank Warren does really think highly of him because Eddie Hearn took his whole stable over there. So a big to-do going on. So all of a sudden, Anthony Joshua finds himself and Eddie Hearn is... A good talker. Doesn't seem too concerned about Usyk, but when he gets in front of the camera, he he speaks highly of Usyk. More because of, I think, what Tony Bellew was telling Eddie Hearn about how it was just basically hard for him to get in there and get an advance on Usyk. And Usyk just had an answer for everything. Very intelligent, very active, super endurance, decent power. Eddie Hearn... Mandatory, he hasn't put uh, Joshua in there with AJ. Now, Eddie Hearn is still feeling good about himself, but he knows it's a tough fight. The fight happens, Joshua loses. Eddie Hearn starts to have a downward spiral. Okay? Now, Joshua wants to go right back into the fight. Eddie Hearn doesn't want to do it. Now, remember, amidst all of this going on, this is Joshua's second loss. You know, Eddie Hearn already showed that first loss. He doesn't handle... AJ losing well because I've said this in other videos and I strongly believe AJ makes up about 50% of the revenue over there at Metro. I don't know that. That's just an assumption I'm making. But I know in Eddie Hearn's world and in boxing, I think most would agree, when you have belts, it matters. Okay? I mean, you don't have to have belts and if you're selling two, three million pay-per-view, you're going to be the A-side. It's the person who generates the money. But for the most part, if you have belts, if you have hardware, you're probably going to be the A-side, especially if you're going against an opponent who doesn't have a title. Now, remember, Eddie Hearn, Joshua gets in there with Usyk, he loses the first fight. He, he, he gets his ass beat, okay? Out box, out class, almost got knocked out. So let's stop right there. At this point, in, in that fight with Usyk, Eddie Hearn had a total freak out. Because he, with Eddie Hearn, when it comes to his... Dillian White or whoever else, he counts on AJ to win, win, win DJ Khaled, right? But that's just not what happened when AJ got in there against a superstar boxer. Now, some people say AJ has always kind of, he's kind of had his career given to him on a silver platter, and now he's stepping up against real competition. He's struggling. And I think that's a bit of a slap in the face. AJ's fought Really good competition. But AJ changed his style after Andrew Ruiz tapped him up. And that's what happened. He fights scared now. He doesn't fight big, strong, and powerful. He fights scared. And that's why I think he lost to Houston the first time and he lost the second time. But 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 let's not even get into the second fight. We're going to stop at that first loss. So with Eddie Hearn having this meltdown in front of us, he leaves Sky Sports. Now he's on the zone. He's got all these people who are turning their back on him or don't like him. You know, from LB, Showtime, you know, you got crap going on with De La Hoya. You know, you got trying to keep Canelo happy. Yeah, figured out, figured a way to get Triple G over there during all this time, right? He got the DAZN execs over there looking at him, kind of trusting his word, his opinion, some of the decision being made. I think Eddie Hearn had a pretty large influence over that. So you got this guy who's a multi billionaire who owns DAZN. And he's looking at Eddie Hearn like, hey, we need a return on this investment. Because Eddie Hearn, all those guys he signed, I think from back in like 2018, when this whole DAZN thing popped off, it just didn't get the return on the investment they were looking at. It just didn't work out that way, okay? So now Eddie Hearn is kind of hoping for AJ to turn things around. As long as AJ's winning and doing big numbers, Eddie Hearn was making a shitload of money. And in return, so was DAZN at least to, to help recoup some of that money, but that has not been the case. So now Eddie Hearn's in a position after the first Houston loss to figure out what he's going to do. Um, so let's fast forward to the second the second fight. AJ loses again, two fights back-to-back, -back, and they have no titles. And during this time, Dillian White's losing. 
He's got guys on his stable who don't want to be there. Um, you remember, you know, had the crap with Gerald Miller back in the day. He's got um, Canelo out here losing to Baval. It doesn't matter who Baval's with. They count a lot on Canelo um, on getting wins. Canelo's not doing big numbers. Canelo and Triple G, not not the big fight, the big numbers they're hoping for. Uh, the zone has to go to a pay-per-view model. All kind of crap is going on over there. And Eddie Hearn is stressing. Now, the one thing that I noticed about Eddie Hearn that really concerned me, right, is the freak out for AJ losing. But that that that's part of it. But it's his aggression in the media now. You know, he's not laughing things off anymore. He's pissed. He's, he's just, you know, he's human. But he's stressed, man. He's tired even going at Jake Paul. I got the numbers wrong because these articles, they're all saying something different. But I said he's suing Jake Paul for 75000 Then I said 75000 someone said $20 million. I read about 10 more articles today. It's $100 million. Now, Eddie Hearn would have never chased after Jake Paul. He, he Actually, he doesn't even take Jake Paul, Jake Paul serious. But he just doesn't have patience anymore. You know, he, he's stressing. Remember, he took over matchroom from his dad. His dad basically walked away and said, all right, son, I'm, I'm turning the reins over to you. You know, sail the ship. And Eddie Hearn, I think, is doing a good job. But he's, there's just some pitfalls that they've encountered that I don't think he really planned for. And really, I don't think he had a contingency plan to deal with Anthony Joshua not winning. And he said that on multiple occasions. The plan was for AJ to keep winning. So now you go back and look at that nine-figure, five-year deal that he signed with DAZN. It was damn near a billion-dollar deal, okay? You better believe there were some clauses in there. And that deal had a lot to do with AJ winning. And AJ hasn't won. Canelo came back against Triple G, but they just didn't get the numbers they want. So the amount of money that DAZN has committed to sign fighters, right? A billion dollars, right? I don't know if it's all blown or what happened, but a lot of that money's gone. Then you come now and you're paying all this money to Anthony Joshua, all this money to Triple G, all this money to um, Canelo. Not quite getting the return you're hoping for. So you start making these fights, right? You look at the fights that's being made, I'm telling you. That's not what Eddie Hearn deep down wants to do. He's making these fights because everything has to be a grand slam. Every fight has to be a grand slam. Case in point, Eubank Jr. and um, Conor Ben. But it's very unfortunate for Eddie Hearn because it almost seems that like no one likes him, man. You know, and and that's one of the things. Social media is a blessing is a cur and a curse. And out of all the promoters out there, Eddie Hearn's the one who stays in front of camera, and it has helped boost his profile, helped his business. I mean, we all know who Eddie Hearn is now. But at the same time, you know, it gives everybody a lot of ammunition. There's just so many things that you just can't take back once you say it in front of the camera. And people out there are going to take it and run with it. And I'm sure that Eddie Hearn, no matter how much he tries to laugh things off, it bothers him. And it's showing up now. He's a horrible promoter. He's failing. Anthony Joshua, you know, this and that. And fighters who are on the stable not wanting to be there no more, trying to leave him, go over to Frank Warren. You know, the whole crap with this Kinahan thing. Um, you know, it's just... It, it, even though a lot of the Kinahan stuff doesn't really affect Eddie Hearn, just, they're, they're just the rumors, you know, tying him to that, which my understanding, he has nothing to do with that crap. But he's just stressed, man. He's always traveling. He's, tra he's in Australia. He's in all these different countries. He's in, in all the damn countries. This man's a workaholic, man. And it's just not working out for him right now. He's a young guy. He's younger than me. You know, I'm 47. He's younger than me. And to see him with his workload, but with that workload comes a huge amount of responsibility and stress. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at all sitting here saying he doesn't deserve a little bit of pressure. You know what I'm saying? He, he deserves some pressure. It comes with the territory. But I'm, I'm watching him. I'm not liking what I'm seeing, man. He's... Always feels like he has to explain himself now. He's on the defensive. And I just think that people need to really, people are starting to become concerned about him because even with Dillian White, you know, he didn't, he, he was saying he doesn't care if Dillian White 
if, De if Dillian White goes to, 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 to uh, Frank Warren over there, he didn't care. Like he, uh, those Smith boys, those Smith brothers, want to leave Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn doesn't care. See, Eddie Hearn needs wins. He needs hardware. And that's why right now you're watching with him and AJ. Eddie Hearn wants to be the A-side so bad. That's why we may not get this fight between AJ, AJ and Tyson Fury. He wants to be the A-side. Like he still, he still thinks he's the A-side. It's like coming across some guys that you went to high school with or some girls you went to high school with. And in high school, they were kind of cool. The girls were kind of pretty. Everybody wanted to crack them off, right? Fast forward 30, 40 years, they still thinking they're the prom king and queen. They still thinking they're on the basketball court doing this shit. They still thinking they baseball and football and that shit is over, but they just can't let it go. Like reality hasn't hit them yet. You know, it's still dwelling in the past. And I think that's what you're seeing with Eddie Hearn right now. He still feels in his mind that he's the prom king. He's the basketball player or cricket, you know what I'm saying? Or baseball or football, whatever you call it, whatever sport. He's still thinking he's the jock. And Anthony is the, or he's the, the coach that led the team to the championship. That shit is over. And as a result, this shit may fall apart. Now, I get it with Tyson Fury. It can be a little ridiculous, but he kind of makes a valid point. We gave you 60-40. We have the fight date. We got a secure venue. Got to work out the network deal, but that shouldn't, it shouldn't be that hard. But this comes back to what I was telling you about Frank Warren warning Eddie Hearn about leaving Sky Sports and going to the zone. The major sticking point with all this is the networks, the zone, Sky Sports, ESPN. Like this is the sticking point now. Now, had Eddie Hearn kept that relationship, wouldn't be too much of an issue, but as a result, we're not going to get it. Tyson Fury is being stubborn. Eddie Hearn is saying, you won't rush me because he still thinks he's the prom king. And Anthony Joshua is doing rap videos. <laughs> Whatever the hell that shit was he's doing out there, Anthony Joshua rapping about signing the contract. Everybody's going crazy over there, man. The hell wrong with people? So now you come back to where we are today. It's unfortunate because Eddie Hearn's on, on being interviewed, telling people to F off. You know, tell him, I may punch somebody in the face. Like, Eddie Hearn never talks like that. I think it's good to blow off a little steam, but I, I'm more concerned about him. And and I, my concern, and I don't know this, but my concern is pressure he's under to try to recoup some of that money, that disowned money. And the pressure he's under with this nine, significant nine-figure, five-year deal where there were some clauses in it where he's not making what he thought he was making and maybe staying with Sky Sports would have been a better deal for him. But I don't know that. I'm just watching a man who's gone from being almost a jokester, a prankster, who seems happy in front of the camera, to becoming more of a uh, short-fused, on the edge, aggressive, super negative. And super don't care. And super selfish. And I think there should be super concern. Because like I said, Eddie Hearn seems to be at a point of no return. As his churn, earn, stern, heartburn concern as he yearns to be the A-side again. And I'm very concerned about Eddie Hearn, man. Talk about a five-year, nine-figure deal. Sky Sports, BT Sports, The Zone. All that's up in the air. So, you know, Sue and Jake Paul, the LBBS, talking about the zone's going to be the UFC of boxing. That hasn't happened, but it's doing all right. But this, this is what Eddie Hearn was expecting the zone to be the UFC of boxing. 10 years, Scott was with Sky Sports, walked away from it to be with the zone. 120 shows a year. All that's kind of fall to the wayside. Still be a lot of shows on the zone, but. It is what it is. Nine-figure deal, man. Losing his stable of fighters. Who knows what his home life is like. Champions losing belts. It's frustrating. But I'm going to leave it as that. I think we need to cut this man some slack and 
Seriously, man, you know, let's see if he can get it all together because he's under a lot of pressure, but he, he has a big mouth, and he knows he has a big mouth, and he burnt some bridges. Sometimes, man, you got to live with those decisions. But it's just a lot that's happened since, really, 2018 time frame when this zone thing came up. And Eddie Hearn was out there with the big wallet, dis disrespecting everyone, talking a lot of crap, pursuing fighters, had the briefcase. Remember, I did a video on that. Hitting fighters with the briefcase of money. Hey, leave your promoter and come here. You take that. Don't worry about it. That's yours. Like real crazy shit that he was doing. It's all come full circle, man. But at the end of the day, I like Eddie Hearn, man. I, I would hate to see this man stressed out and all messed up. And all of a sudden, now he has mental health issues. He turns into Ryan Garcia. He turns into Adrian Broner. He turns into Figueroa. You know what I'm saying? We can't have him having, you know a bunch of mental health issues. We need him to be 100%, man. We need all these guys to be 100%. But anyway, you guys be easy. That being said, like and subscribe. Shout out to the vet veterans. Eddie Hearn, let's get it together, man. Because at the end of the day, you can't quit. You're in this too deep. Plus that billionaire whose money you blown, probably put a foot up your ass. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.